Good morning, those of you who are just joining us. Um, if you're new, you don't know this, but if you've been on any of our webinars before, we're just going to give a minute or two for others to join in. Um, it's just turned 1030, so just bear with us and let me get um, the uh, handful of people who are with us, um, some, some fellow attendees. So just uh, you get to sit and look at us for a second. All right, so it is um, ten thirty one. So I'm going to get started just with my uh, with my little with my little speech, my little spiel, and then I'm going to hand over to uh, to Nick. So good morning, everybody. It's um, uh, Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? No, it's Tuesday. Um, and today today is the Score Monmouth webinar um, about. Uh, uh, Building better businesses and the life of coaching for businesses. So we have Nick Marinello. Nick Marinello. I'm going to say this right now. Nick Marinello. Marinello. Is that right? Did I get it's it right? Marinello. You got okay. it. Nick Marinello, who is the president of Focal Point Business Coaching in New Jersey. Um, he's going to be presenting for us today. Um, but just our little, uh, my little comments about Score Monmouth. So this is Scott. We uh, represent Score Monmouth. Score Monmouth is a non-profit business based in Monmouth County, but we are part of a uh, larger organization uh, countrywide, and we are powered and funded by the SBA. Although all of us here in Monmouth County and the in every local chapter uh, are run 100% by volunteers. If you are looking for free business mentoring, um, always uh, reach out to us here over at SCORE. And if you are looking to volunteer, we're always looking for volunteers as well to help in any capacity. For today's webinar, we uh, welcome uh, questions. We love to have questions. We love interacting with you as our attendees. So please uh, put your questions in the Q&A. And if you can try to put them in the Q&A and not the chat, um, that's easier for us because we can make sure we do get to all the questions and we can answer all the, um, everyone. Uh, the webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our YouTube channel. And um, if the, I, I believe Nick said he has some worksheets. And so after the webinar as well, we will send those worksheets out to all of you as attendees. Um, I think that is all I have to talk about right now. So Nick, I am going to hand over to you. Terrific. Thank you very much, Claire. I appreciate it. And welcome, everyone. Hope you all had a, a great weekend and uh, the week is off to a good start. Uh, as Claire mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about building a better business. Uh, this is my tagline. I keep it up there all the time. Uh, build a better business to live a better life. Uh, we'll talk about the four cycles uh, of a business. Uh, there's different phases that we all go through and then uh, we will definitely uh, get into some hands-on workshop type of things you can do uh, so that when you walk away from today's presentation, you actually can put some of the ideas to work. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been around a while. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since uh, the early 80s, uh, built a number of businesses and sold them, uh, primarily in financial services and technology. Uh, last business I sold uh, for myself was in uh, 2011. Um, I sold my uh, financial technology company to LPL Financial. You might know them, the largest independent brokerage firm in the world. Uh, and uh, since that time, I started uh, working with small to mid-sized business owners uh, throughout the tri-state area, actually nationally now, actually since the pandemic, everything's gone national, right? So, uh, and we, we help businesses get to the next level. Uh, and every business out there has its challenges. There's no doubt about that. Uh, what, I, what I learned uh, in my career, which is now 40 years, uh, is that uh, everything is learnable. Uh, there are aspects of every business uh, uh, that you can just sit, focus. If you have the right tools, you, you can put them to work and you can build your business. So uh, why do we want to build a better business? Obviously, you know, we want to live a better life. That's usually the reason why people go into business, right? To create an environment for themselves uh, where they can uh, provide better uh, for their families, their, their employees, their employees' families, the community, et cetera. So um, 
that's a little bit about my background and what I do, why I do what I do. So uh, we'll jump right into it. And um, as Claire said, if there's any questions, um, you know, please don't hesitate, throw them in there. Uh, happy to uh, happy to answer them as we go along. Uh, and of course, I'll make myself available at the end of the presentation and then even after the call. If you all want to get in touch with me, uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm speaking to you right now from my home in North Carolina. I split time between New Jersey and North Carolina now. Uh, and um, I'm in that stage of life where uh, I'm starting to, uh, you know, think about retirement, but uh, not, not there yet. So, okay, let's get going. Uh, I'm going to ask you to maybe quiet your cell phones. Um, you really want to ring out the most we can from today's session. I'm going to hit you with a lot of information. Uh, you know, these are, this is really, I believe, and in, in if you're going to invest the time, you might as well get something out of it. So please uh, ring out the most you can from today's session. Uh, so what are the goals? Uh, I would like to help you develop absolute clarity about your business strategy. Uh, I'd like to help you determine where in the life cycle of a business you are. Every business, as I mentioned, goes through cycles. Uh, and uh, you, when you can identify where you are in that cycle, it makes it so much easier to, to create a strategy and a mindset uh, that'll help you get to the next level. And then lastly, uh, we will create a, and use a one-page business plan. So uh, let me jump right in there. So as I mentioned, why are we here? We, we want to build a better business, but there's a problem. It's not the easiest thing to do, right? Because um, we're all really, really busy, um, especially these days. Uh, there's so many distractions and uh, people, you know, the people who have uh, who were homeschooling for two years, had the kids at home. There's so many things that have distracted us from really focusing on our business. We're really busy. And that tends to sometimes create this fog. And for those business owners that are online here, you know what I'm talking about. You get that those days where your, your brain is just foggy and we, and we just don't take the time or the effort sometimes to rise above the fog and look down on our business. Um, so when you have a plan in place that we're going to talk about today, it'll help you, you know, take yourself, elevate yourself above the fog and really focus on what's important. One of the things I like to talk about is, um, is metrics. Uh, now, that's a word sometimes that scares people. Um, uh, I don't know what metrics I should be looking at. There's only a handful of metrics you really need to be focusing on, but it's so important that you know the score of the game. You don't want to get into the bottom of the ninth and realize you're down seven, seven runs, and then you have to make some decisions and changes and so forth. So you want to be have the ability to think about your business all along a path uh, to turn, what's the score? Am I winning or am I losing at this point? Uh, what changes do I need to make? Because if we don't do that, we may never get to where we want to go. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to have the plan in place. You have to have the milestones in place uh, because you don't want to be in a situation uh, where, again, you might be confused, you don't know where you're going, uh, you don't have that, that plan to go back to that I like to say your personal constitution to refer to. That's probably not a good thing to be talking about today. There's so, many, there's so much controversy around that. But we want to have that document that we can always go back to and say, okay, are we on track? Are we going to get there? So I look at this as an opportunity uh, to sit back and say, okay, Let's create a strategy because the strategy is what really creates the leverage and the power in our business. When you're out there on the seas of running a business, right, we're all taking a journey. Uh, you're going to have headwinds. You're going to have different obstacles you have to overcome. But when you have a real clear mindset and you have an absolute strategy with, my, with milestones you want to get to, you can harness those challenges. You can actually take the headwind, right, and tack into it, right, where you're going to be going directly into the headwind, okay, but you're going to be going side to side, all right? You're going to be using these challenges as potential opportunities to grow your business. I like to use a lot of metaphors, uh, and I love railroad tracks. Um, the the idea behind a railroad track, okay, is that it starts at point A and goes to point B, right? And there's no turns, right? You always know that you're going to start here and you're looking to end up down there. And from time to time, and again, uh, terrible news as far as the, the, the railroad track analogy just hit me as I was doing this just now. Um, but you will get taken off the track from time to time. And if you have your railroad tracks laid down, you know exactly, okay, 
how to get back on them and where you want to go. So first big idea I want to talk to you about today is strategy over tactics. And I'll say that again, strategy over or before tactics. I can't tell you how many small businesses that I work with or that my team works with uh, that we meet and they're just trying things. They have all these different tactics. They're trying this marketing, they're trying the sales approach, they're trying a new product, they're trying a new service, they're trying, trying. The key, okay, to really building a successful business is not to try things, but to do things. Do things that are consistent with your strategy. You have to spend the time and effort and energy and conversations with colleagues and friends and coaches and mentors to come up with a good strategy before you start trying things, All right? So I like to say, let's go from try to do, and that's all gonna be based upon what strategy we wanna put in place. I love this, this, this quote uh, from General Patton, a good plan violently executed right now is better, better than a perfect plan next week. The key here is it doesn't have, your plan does not have to be perfect, right? We don't know what's coming around the next corner. We don't know, okay, what might try to knock us off those tracks I was just talking about. But the key is to get a plan in place and then execute on it now. Don't delay to try to get a perfect plan because there is no such thing. I'd much rather see my clients make some decisions, run down the path, okay? And then you make adjustments as you go along. You don't wanna get that paralysis by analysis component of things. You really wanna to get to work. So the tools, again, we're gonna talk about here today is gonna to help you do that much more quickly. All right, so let's, uh, let's start to talk about building a strategic plan. There's five key principles, okay, to building a strategic plan. And we'll go through each of them today. Uh, very quickly, and as Claire said, I have some worksheets that we'll make available uh, at the end of this call uh, so that you are able to take today's uh, lesson, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, today's principles and put them into place. First thing is you have to clearly define your business. Um, and it's not as easy as someone might think, all right? So we're going to go through some questions. And the first one is, what business am I in? What business am I really in? Uh, if you look at, if you talk to somebody that's in the railroad industry, um, you know, they're not just moving, okay, uh, goods, they're, they're in the transportation business, right? They might be moving passengers, they might be moving freight, they might have to compete with airlines, they might have to compete with over the road track and trails, whatever it is, you have to think about your business. Uh, Apple would not say they're in the computer business, right? Apple's in the business of making people more efficient, right? As a business coach, okay, I'm in the business of growth. Right? I want people to grow, their personal performance, ability to grow, their team to grow, and therefore the business will grow. So think a little bit outside the box a little bit and say, what business am I really in? Next question is, what business might I be in? Right? Where, as Gretzky used to say, uh, you know, he's so great on the ice because he goes to where the puck is going, not to where the puck is. Where's your industry going? What business might I be in? down the road. Um, great example that I like to talk about is during the pandemic, you had companies that were in the party business, okay, basically putting big tents out for big parties, right? People have big confirmation parties or communion parties or graduations, and they have the big tents put up in their yards. Uh, well, that's a business they were in. But when the pandemic hit and the restaurants all of a sudden now had to go outside and, and, and set up dining facilities outside, those same party companies are now in the restaurant business. And it opened up new opportunities for them. They were putting up tents, they were selling tents, and then they started to engage with other types of vendors who were in the restaurant business. So uh, think about your business a little bit differently, all right? Not only what business are you currently in and what you're doing, but where's the puck going down the ice? Where, where uh, might you be thinking that you could take your business, okay, to the next level in maybe a different area? Who's my competition? Well, if you're in the cruise industry, it's not other cruise lines, right? It's any type of vacation uh, type that you're in competition with. It could be the club meds of the world. It could be staycations, okay? Who is your competition? 
Um, CPAs, okay, who is, who's their competition? It's none of the CPAs, okay? Although yes, there's competition, but it's also the software. It's also the do-it-yourself people. It's also, you know, the government even does free tax taxes and so forth. So they have to think about who their competition is. Um, and you have to make some decisions as to what products or services you might want to add in order to compete with the competition that you might not normally um, think about that you compete with head on. Uh, for me, uh, in the, as a business coach, uh, it's not other business coaches. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of people out there. Okay. Um, but my biggest competition is when people do nothing. Okay. I, I, it makes me crazy. Okay. Because we know, okay, we can help people get to the next level much more quickly using tools and so forth. But when people do nothing, that's a comp that's competition to me. Uh, so I need to help people. Okay. I need to come up with a way of getting people to think differently to actually use a score mentor or use an outside coach. All right. Because you will get there quicker. So think about your business. Okay. Uh, from a competitive perspective, who are you competing against? Where are your customers? And then who are your customers? Right? Who are your best customers? Those people that will refer business to you. Who is your ideal client? You've heard this so many times. Who is the ideal person? Create that avatar, right? What do they look like? Is it male, female? How old are they? Do they have children? Do they vacation? What type of occupations are they in? The more time you spend focusing on who your ideal client is, the more you're going to be able to target market them and change your dialogue, change the way you are approaching um, the people. So you have to spend time on really thinking through who are my customers? Who do I want to get in front of? Who are the best people? This is an easy, interesting one. And the people don't spend the time uh, doing this as much as they think they should. What is your area of excellence? I like to talk about your area of awesomeness, right? What do you do that makes you excited, that gives you energy? And that's the way you define where your area of excellence is, right? You, you're able to get up in the morning and you're doing something, right? That really excites you, all right? You get that burst of energy. You see people around you are attracted to you when you're doing that activity. You're really, really good at it, right? You have to determine what is your area of excellence so that you're spending more time doing that. Uh, the 80-20 rule, okay, Pareto's principle absolutely applies to business. 80% of your success is going to come from 20% of your activities. You have to determine what are your most valuable activities, and that's going to be in your area of excellence. So, and again, there'll be worksheets for this uh, that we'll send out, but the bottom line is you have to think about what do you really do well, right, and how do you do more of that? What are the constraints on your business? What's your critical constraints? What's holding you back? I always like to say, why aren't you there already? If that's what you want to do, why aren't you there already? And that helps you, <clears throat> excuse me, that helps you identify, you know, what's holding you back? What are the constraints? Is it money? Is it knowledge? Okay. Is it a new marketing program? What's holding you back? Once you identify it, okay, it's easier to alleviate. So I always tell people, you can't regulate your, your actions. You can't change course until you actually become aware of what's holding you back. So spend the time um, and think about what's, what's, what are your critical constraints? And lastly, and we're going to get into this in just a moment, because this is the life cycle of a business. Where am I on the sigmoid curve? All right. And we're going to talk about that right now, because I know that means probably nothing to you at the moment. So let's talk about that. What is the sigmoid curve? <clears throat> and excuse me. Sigmoid curve, okay, talks about specifically where you are in the life cycle of a business, right? And there's different phases and cycles that we all go through. The first phase that any business goes through is the learning phase, right? That's when you first open up, all right, and you have a lot of things you need to learn. Second component is the growth phase, which is really where we all want to get into as quickly as possible. Third phase is the decline phase. Every business inevitably will arrive into the decline phase. And we'll talk about that unless, all right, unless they go into the fourth phase, which we'll talk about shortly. So along the life cycle of a business, all right, we have what we call traps and opportunities that we want to be aware of. 
all right? The first one is the honeymoon trap. When you first open up your business, you're excited. You might have a, a decent amount of cash maybe you borrowed from the SBA. Uh, maybe you have some sort of financing that you put in place. Um, the honeymoon trap is, is we don't want to make decisions strictly on emotion. And that's what happens very early on in a business. Everything looks like a shiny object and you grab it, right? And that gets back to what I was talking about as far as strategy before tactics, right? You want to be sure you have a strategy in place that you're not just spending money and trying different things and listening to this person and jumping into that thing. So the honeymoon trap, as I like to look at and call, is, is basically saying, okay, what have you done so far? Okay, um, you know, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and let's not waste money, right? You want to focus on what's doing well. At the bottom of the learning curve, all right, is a very, very a scary, dangerous time, okay, in most business owners' lives, all right? You, you, you basically have been spending money. Uh, you might not have as much revenue as you thought, and you're at the bottom of the curve, and you have to make some decisions, all right? Now, what do I do, all right? There's an old fable called the Three Feet from Gold, um, which was all about a Pennsylvania farmer who bought a farm, and he was, bought the farm only because he was told there was, there was gold uh, underneath the land on the farm. And he was digging, digging, digging for several years and never hit gold, right? He got tired, fed up, sold the property. And the next person came in, purchased it and went three feet deeper into the mine, okay, and hit gold. The moral of the story is where are you at, okay, with respect to the decisions you've made in the learning phase? Are you three feet from gold? Or is it time to pack up the tent, okay, go home and try something different? This is where, again, the critical thinking component of what we do, all right, as business owners is so important. Do I have to go a little deeper, okay, into the mine to get myself out? Or is it time to switch course right now, okay? And again, look to score, look to mentors, okay? Try to get some help, try to get a third party to help you make that determination if you feel you're down here. Very often, okay, I get involved with companies and most mentors and, and coaches get involved in companies somewhere along the growth phase, okay, of a business, along the growth curve, uh, which is wonderful, okay, because they've already experienced, okay, uh, the entrepreneur that has already experienced uh, a lot of different uh, challenges, okay, and also solutions. Uh, and now they're at a point where they're starting to pay down some debt, all right, and uh, they have to make some different decisions in order to get to the next stage of growth. We call it the founder's trap. And that's when you have to start to think a little differently. Do I make a further investment into the company uh, and hire more people? Uh, do I pay down debt? Do I borrow more? Okay, do I need more capital to get to the next level? There's a lot of decisions that need to be made uh, right about here in the, in the growth phase of your, of your business. Um, and again, you should be looking for some help from, uh, from SCORE and others. Along the growth phase, we can get into a situation where we call the Midas trap. This is when everything is clicking, everything's going great. You're feeling good about yourself, you're making sales, you have new customers coming on board, um, and everything you touch turns to gold. That's a scary <laughs> situation to be in also, as, as good as it feels, right? You have potentially uh, the, the situation where it's not going to last forever right? That you have to start thinking differently, that things are not necessarily going to remain the same. Um, everything you touch will not continue to turn to gold. I promise there's going to be some changes. And that takes you then potentially into a decline. And there's a lot of companies that go through some wonderful growth, some wonderful growth, everything's going well, and then the markets change on them. The pandemic obviously introduced a lot of, <laughs> a lot of decline phases for a number of businesses. Uh, because it was very difficult to anticipate what would happen next, right? And sometimes you don't feel like you're in the decline phase, or maybe you deny that you're in the decline phase, that it might be one quarter or two quarters of bad numbers. Uh, and you just say, ah, it's just the times and so forth. And it might be right. It might just be, okay, a, a short-term temporary situation. But you do have to spend the critical thinking time to think about, you know, are we actually in a decline? And you know, all the stories you've heard about Blockbuster Video and uh, Kodak, and they all they all had, you know, the Midas trap, okay? They all went through times when the business was really percolating and they did not make decisions to take the business to the next level, which is really, okay, the fourth phase of the business, 
which is the opportunity phase. The opportunity phase is when you can sit there and say, okay, let's think about our whole business. And do we start another learning curve? Do we go back into what do we have to learn, okay, to get to the next level? The takeaway I love from this slide, okay, is that in order to get into the growth phase of your business, you have to go through a learning phase. You just can't, there's no way of getting there without learning, right? So you have to spend some time, money, effort, energy, and learn. And you need to ask yourself, where are you personally in your skill set, your knowledge base, right? Where is your staff? Where is your business on this curve, right? What do I need to learn to get to the next level of growth? What do we need to do differently, right? So it's, this is something that happens with every business. Sometimes it's very clear. Sometimes it's a little foggy, as I mentioned earlier, but you have to spend the time to say, okay, where are we at? Where are we at specifically within our business? Any questions, anything come up yet? Claire, I don't know if you're still there or not, but- I'm still here. No, so far, no nothing questions. yet. Okay. Yeah. So I just, again, I'll encourage anybody, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to place them. We will uh, answer them for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Claire. Um, all right. So what kind of questions should you be asking about your, about your business? Some, some strategic questions, right? What are my values? Okay. What really, what's, what, what am I about? What are my strengths? All right. Go through the list, write them down. What are you good at? Right. What do you care about? Right. What's your vision for the future? What's your ideal vision for the future? I'm going to give you a great worksheet in just a little bit here to work on this, but you really want to begin with the end in mind, right? If you, if you read Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people, uh, one of the habits, I forget which one it is, is second or third, I think is begin with the end in mind, right? Where is your ideal life? What is your ideal business? And how do I work backwards from there to get there? Right? What's your mission? What's what you want? What do you do? Right? In order to achieve that vision, what do you do? What do you have to do? What's your purpose, right? And let's talk about what's my why, okay, in just a minute. Uh, but it's, it's a very, very important component of having the right mindset and having the right intestinal fortitude to drive your business to the next level. Uh, you need to have this. What's your purpose, right? That'll drive you to, what are my goals? What do I want my year to look like, all right? Today is what, June 28th, okay, uh, 2022. You know, what do you want to, what do you want to be doing June 28th, 2023 what's your goals okay what has to happen between now and then for you to say wow i had a great year all right what has to happen what knowledge and skill do i need to learn to get there identify the gaps that might be in your business right now your personal okay knowledge and skills maybe it's your team maybe it's your staff that has to learn something new again can't get to the growth part of the curve until you go through the learning part what habits do you currently have? What habits do you need to create, right? If you think about it, your habits create your character, right? Are you somebody who gets up in the morning and hits the ground running, okay? Are you a high energy person? Are you somebody who's really driven? What's your character, right? And it's all, okay, identifiable by your habits, right? Are you lazy, okay? Do you sit and do nothing, okay? Well, it's gonna be interpreted as your character also. So you have to think about what are my daily habits? Am I actually effective okay when i get up in the morning you know what daily actions okay happen every day what's my day look like so these are all interrelated right your your day you know what you do during your day will, will basically create your habits your habits are going to be a function of what do i need to learn all right what do i need to what do i need to learn what, what are the things i need to do to get to my goals so these are some strategic questions you want to ask yourself again we'll provide all of this but I like people to think about playing to their strengths. So one of the worksheets, okay, is to sit and think about, right, what are your weaknesses and what are your strengths in your business? As I said earlier, 80-20 rule applies. You want to play to your strengths. You want to identify them. I say, I'm really good at this, right? And you want to do more of it. Now, the flip side to that are weaknesses. All right, and you'll be surprised. Um, often, okay, weaknesses can be interpreted, okay, or spun, for lack of a better term, okay, into strengths. I see a question just popped up there. 
Could you comment on pivot from phase to phase? Sure, sure, Frank, I can do that. So um, let me let me just go back to that for a second. Then, as long as um, as long as Frank would like to talk about that, let me just go back to. And I'll skip through this really quickly. There we go. So the pivot, okay. And there's going to be a pivot from here, and there's a pivot up here, right? So you don't know, okay, what you don't know is such an overused term, okay, but it's so true. You have to spend the time and effort to determine first where you are on the curve before you can decide if it's time to pivot. And look at what you've hoped to accomplish in the past, okay, maybe some of the goals you have laid out in the past, and have you gotten there? Okay, what held you back? That might be a pivot point. Okay, that might be something saying, you know what, I have to change, right? That's what a pivot is, right? It's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's the vertex, okay, of what you have to do. Let's make a pivot, let's make a change. So um, the question, the questions on these you want to answer uh, without more specifics, okay? But the key, okay, to making a pivot, the key to um, making changes, okay, is just to have that clarity, okay, the clarity as to where you're at first. All right, so let me just flip to where I was. Frank, I don't know if I asked that question well enough, and I'm happy to go offline with you um, and talk specifically about that. Uh, but uh, I hope that helped a little bit. Uh, let's get back to strengths and weaknesses. What are the weaknesses in your business, right? What are the, and, and how do you identify that? Well, sometimes it's, you know, oh my God, I hope they don't ask me that question, right? All of a sudden you've identified a weakness, all right, in your presentation or in your product. All right. And what I like to have my clients do is run through that exercise. You know, what, what questions, okay, are you fearful that they're going to ask? Well, one of them is, you know, you get too small, okay, um, you know, and, you know, you might be one of the smallest, whatever you are in the industry, all right? But you can turn that around, just as I put here in the example, you know, yeah, we might be small, but we're one of the most nimble, personable boutiques in the industry, all right, our smallness okay, is one of our strengths, right? You want to talk about maybe somebody new who's in the insurance industry. And I've had, I've had this. I've, I've, I've coached insurance agents, um, new financial advisors. Uh, and one of the biggest concerns is, you know, how long have you been in the business is a question that they get. And they worry about that. And, you know, what I like to tell them is, look, you didn't make the decision to go into the insurance industry or go into financial services or whatever business you might be in overnight. You did your homework. Right. So before I joined XYZ company, Mr. Jones, right, I did my homework. Okay. I, I went to see who had the best products, who had the best support mechanisms in place. All right. I know I could be as great as I am, but if I don't have the strength and support behind me, all right, um, I'm probably not going to be that effective for you. So I did my homework first. So yeah, so I might only be in the business, uh, you know, two years, whatever the case might be, but I have aligned myself with some of the best people in the industry. Right? So take the weaknesses you might have in your business, all right, at least perceived weaknesses, and face them and just come up with how do you turn that into a strength? Hope that makes sense. All right. How many people, and I can't see you, so I normally would say how many people through a show of hands have heard of Simon Sinek, okay, and what's your why? All right. If you haven't listened... We can ask for a raised hand on that. Um, if anybody wants to raise their hand, if they uh, have heard of him, that would be great. Simon Sinek um, burst onto the scenes, I guess about eight to 10 years ago. Uh, and Simon is became very, very, he's obviously a wonderful author, uh, but he's also a great orator. He really takes his, his concepts and speaks very clearly to people uh, about how to engage and actually use some of these concepts in their business. And he did a wonderful TED talk called What's Your Why, right? And um, in that TED talk, he says, you know, most companies talk about what we do, okay? And they work in with, right? And he'll talk about how, you know, a computer company says, yeah, we make great computers, okay? We make them in Toledo, whatever it is, um, you know, and they can talk, and it, this is what it does, right? Talks about the, the benefits, right? But not too many companies talk about why they do it. Right. And what he has found is that people really don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Right. And it's a, a little bit of a concept sometimes that's difficult to grasp. But 
the bottom line on this is that people want to hear your passion, all right? They want to understand what's in it for them. Why should I work with you, all right? Why should I buy your product or your service, all right? What are you passionate about? And you have to somehow convey, you know, why you do what you do. Because again, people don't want to buy just because this is what you do, okay? They want to why you do it, okay? It's not your what, it's your why. So one of the worksheets, okay, that we'll provide to you uh, is what I call, you know, the why statement worksheet. You know, what are you passionate about? And the way you use this sheet, and again, this is very simple stuff. You could do it on a blank piece of paper, right? You should spend the time and come up with your why, you know? And the way you work this, this sheet is, there's a three different versions of it. And the reason why I say three different versions is probably gonna be six, eight or 10 versions. You're gonna keep refining it. And I want you to sit back and think about what do you believe in? You know, what gets you up in the morning? Why are you doing what you're doing? Right? One of the things I talk about all the time is, you know, I believe that small business is the backbone of a very healthy community. Right? I believe that. All right? And most of you on this call probably believe that also. I know everybody at SCORE believes that. Right? That's why we do what we do. Right? Small business is, at the, found, is the foundation of a healthy community. I also believe that most small business owners really were not given the training, okay, to, to run a business or how to get, they have not been told how to get their business to the next level. I believe that. But I also believe that given the tools, given the mindset, given the help from SCORE and other mentors, right, they can not only get their business to the next level, but they can make a dramatic impact on their life, okay, their personal life, their family's life, their employees' lives. So when I go through my worksheet, all right, and I implore you to do this, this is such a very powerful tool, as simple as it is, all right, go through it. What do you believe? You know, and if I run through mine, I believe small businesses are the core of a healthy community. I believe that with additional training and some insights, those small business owners could dramatically change the trajectory of their business. And I believe if they change the tra trajectory of their business, they can change the lifestyle that they lead. Okay, and what they can do for their children, okay, and for their families and for their employees. Go through this worksheet. It's a very, very powerful tool, and it plays right off of Simon Sinek's What's Your Why TED Talk. All right, very, very powerful tool, but it will drive your passion to get up in the morning. All right, and it comes across on the phone, it comes across in a networking event. When people meet you and you really have spent the time to think through what your why is. I'm telling you, okay, you're going to have a dramatic change in the way people perceive your business and what you can do for them. So spend the time to do this. Claire, are there any questions out there? Sorry, I had you muted. No, no questions. No, okay. All right, so the TED Talk from, uh, from Simon Sinek is something you should, if you haven't listened to it, you should definitely go, just, just Google Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, TED Talk, and you'll see what's your why come up. All right, so now I wanna to talk to you about taking some of this and going and building a strategic plan. All right, and as I mentioned earlier, the key is let's get some clarity, right? Where, and I like to start this, this is something simple also, one piece of paper, right? This is my reality, oops. Let's go back. Sorry about that, folks. This is my reality. This is where I'm at today. And as I like to tell everybody, and you can tell, I guess, from listening to me already, don't BS yourself, okay? Be real, okay? Be absolutely clear. This is where I'm at, all right? These are my concerns. These are my problems. This is what I have to work with, all right? And this is where I want to get to, right? This is A. This is B. These are the railroad tracks. We are at point A. Today, we want to get to point B down the road, right? What's this, in between? Just quick question. Is this kind of modeled a little bit on sort of like a lean canvas style business plan, like a much more simplified version of a business plan than... Absolutely. It's, it's very much like um, the Rockefeller Habits one-page business plan. Uh, yeah. It's designed, okay, and, I got, and Claire, you probably know this as much as I do. Uh, the whole idea here is not to build a business plan, okay, that goes into a binder and goes in a drawer on the shelf and never exactly. to be looked at again, right? The key yeah. is let's let's build something here, okay, that we can actually use every day, 
Yeah, right? exactly. Because so, that's the key thing about business plans. I think as soon as you mention the word business plan, people kind of shut off because they're like, oh God, I'm going to have to write an 18 page essay about something I'm never going to look at again. Um, yep. these, these types of one page or two page um, uh, worksheets are incredible because they really actually help you to to navigate your business. So yeah, it's great. Absolutely. And, and I found I have I have clients, you know, who are doing 20 million dollars, 30, 40, 50 million dollars a year, and they're using a one page plan that we're going to look at on the next slide. Um, but in order to get to the to build that, we just need to go through this exercise here first. What's your reality? Where do you want to go? Right? Where's your A? What should be? And what's holding you back? What are the what are the roadblocks that you have to overcome? And list them. All right. People don't spend enough time, okay, doing critical thinking about their business. They're always doing, 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 right? They get very busy. It's one of the first slides they put up there. And they don't spend the time to sit back, all right, rise above the fog and think about the business from this perspective. I urge you to actually schedule on your calendar critical thinking time. Right? It should be an hour every other day or so. Spend the time thinking about your business and what you need to do. Right? And then use the sheet. Right? This might be the reality about your service or it might be the reality about your team. Right? It might be the reality about your product. It might be the reality about your personal financial situation. Whatever it is, just get it on paper. Because I can tell you the biggest stress in life is created by lack of clarity. Right? Once, people, once you have clarity, you know, this is what I have to do to fix it. But if you don't spend the time to get that clarity, right? That's why I tell everybody, if they, you know, <laughs> which is the conversation just came up not too long ago about getting a diagnosis of something, okay? If you have, if you have something that's bothering you, get it diagnosed, right? This way, you know, it's the stress of not knowing what it is, right? Is, is, is worse than finding out what it is and then what's the roadmap to, to take care of it, right? Same holds true in your business, right? Get the clarity. All right, now your point B, okay, on there, I like to say, okay, is a three-year vision, all right? Where do you want to be three years from now? This one-page plan, okay, can drive your business, your team's business, okay, everything you're doing going forward. Come up with a three-year vision. Where do you want to live? How much vacation time do you want to take? I'm not talking about just business. I'm talking about your life. What's the vision, okay, for your life? Let's talk about your business. Okay, how much revenue do you want to be doing in three years? What kind of profits do you want to make? What type of clients will you be working with? What's your operations team look like, right? What other markets might you want to go into? Spend the time to come up with the vision. Again, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits. Begin with the end in mind and then work backwards from there, all right? Where do you want to be in three years, all right? And think it through. Personally, from a business perspective, right? Spend as much time as you can and put it in this left quadrant, this top left quadrant, right? So now when I have my three-year vision, right? What do I have to do over the next 12 months that's going to keep me on those railroad tracks to get me to my three-year vision, all right? So if you want to triple your business, maybe you have to double it, okay? Okay, in the first year or whatever the numbers might be. If you're going to go from 10 million to 20 million, all right, maybe you have to do 13 million in the second year, 14 million in this coming year. You want to work with the left side here and determine, all right, what do I have to do? If it's taking more vacation time three years from now, start to identify what you need to do. What do you need to, to relieve of yourself? Do you need to hire somebody? Do you need to do something different so you can free up more time? Obviously, the work life balance is so important. Right, but you have to be able to visualize what that is. And then what do I need to do over the next 12 months for each of the items that you have on this list here? What do I need to do to get myself there? Right. Then once you have that done, right, what do I need to do in the next 90 days? Okay, that's going to achieve the 12 month goals. Right, let's break it down further. What do I need to do in the next 90 days? If it's I need to hire somebody up here, okay, because I have I, I want to take more vacation time, so I have to hire somebody in the next 12 months. Well, what do we need to do in the next 90 days? So maybe it's write up the job description, right? Maybe it's advertising it, okay, and indeed or whatever it might be, right? But this should this should all be connected, right? Let's start with your vision, go to your 12-month goals, 
Talk about your 90 day projects. What's going to push the needle over here? And then lastly, what am I doing this week? What specifically am I doing this week that's going to move the needle on my 90 day projects? This is not your to do list. We all have to do lists. You know, we all wake up in the morning, we all have things we have to do, our emails and so forth. There might only be one or two things every week specifically in this box, right? That's pushing the needle on a 90 day project because you still have to run your business, right? No doubt. We all have things we have to do on a daily basis, but we need to identify the most important things that's going to move us down those railroad tracks to get us to our 12 month goals, which will achieve our vision of three years. I urge you, okay, take this piece of paper. Again, we'll send it to you. It looks just like this, but you can do it yourself, right? And go through this exercise, right? And keep it on your desk, all right? How often? Am I? Uh, okay. On my desk. A quick question about that is how often should somebody perhaps readjust or redo that, right? Great because question. it would change. Uh, absolutely. Guess. Great question. Um, I typically like, well, first of all, you're looking at it every day because it's on your desk, right? And there's a couple of benefits to that. One is you're staying focused, laser focused on your goals. You're reminding yourself of what your goals are every single day, right? So that's an important component. When do you adjust it? You know what? I have a saying, there's, there's no unrealistic goals. There's just unrealistic time frames, right? So when you're doing your 90 day projects, all right, and you're looking at it and say, okay, Am I on course right now to, to achieve my 12 month goals? It's usually every 90 days. I like to tell people, all right, any adjustments that need to be made, we should be doing them in here based on our 12 month goals. Do we need to adjust the goals down or up? Possibly. You don't want to necessarily do that haphazardly because you have a goal for a reason, right? But every 90 days, okay, you should be looking at maybe, okay, expanding. And I have to tell you, if you're doing things right, you're going to find that you're going to, some of the stuff that you have 90 days, you're going to do it within the first two weeks. And then you have to add something to it, right? So there's a, you know, the old, the old management saying, if it's not measured, okay, it can't be managed. Um, and those of us in New Jersey who fly down to the Garden State Parkway, right? We know that uh, if we know there's a radar detector, okay, a little bit down the road, not a detector, but a, a cop with a radar gun down there, we slow down, right? The mere fact that we know that there's a radar trap Okay, down the road, we all slow down, right? Well, same holds true in business, right? If, if you're looking, if you're looking at it on a regular basis and you know, okay, something's coming up, you're going to make some adjustments. So, Claire, I'd say every 90 days, okay, is a good time to, to make a decision uh, whether you should, you know, up your, up your goals, okay, or readjust them or pivot. Uh, but the real mm -hmm. magic and the real power of this, of this piece of paper is keeping it on your desk and reminding yourself of where you expect to be three years from now, 12 months from now, and what I need to do specifically in the next 90 days, and more specifically, what am I doing this week? Okay, that's going to move the needle in this box. And then I guess the next question would be, how many open projects should you have, right? Because if you have 100 projects, it's not realistic. You're not going to complete them all. But if you only have one, that's, you know, what is a good, is there a good rule of thumb of how many open projects you should, you should consider having? Yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's a rule of thumb. It is different from business to business on what type of team or staff you might have around you that maybe can execute on some of the projects. Um, you know, so if you, you know, if you do have a team of 10 people, you might have 10 projects on there, Everybody's got a project, right? But if it's yourself, all right, then you want to be sure that you want to pick out what are the most important ones, okay, up, up here. It might just be one, two, or three, okay, types of projects that you have there. Great point, though, Claire. You, if, the, if you put too much on here, you'll do nothing, right? That's the, that's the thing you have to think about. Another saying I have, anything is possible, everything is not right? You can't do everything, all right? But we can focus on the most important activities and we have to remind ourselves. I mean, a lot of people have a whiteboard in their office, but nothing else just to remind them, okay? Okay, as to what they should be doing, myself included, okay? I need to do that. I need to, it's in front of me here, so I can't show it to you. But the, the bottom line is, don't have too much on there. Nope, just focus on what's most important. Make sense? All right. Sorry, I had you muted again. Yeah, perfect sense. 
Okay, so we're down to 20 after the hour, and I said I'd keep it to about this time. Uh, recapping today, all right, is you want to start with clarity. Clarity is key. It will re reduce your stress, all right, and it'll give you the focus and the vision as to what you need to do. Think about your life three years from now. Create that vision. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? What's your business look like? All right, leverage your strengths. You know, what are you really good at? All right, that's going to get you up in the morning and leverage that. How do you articulate what you do to other people? Well, once you know your why, okay, and you truly do have a passion for what you're doing, it's going to come across in conversation. All right, people will want to align with you because they see you're sincere about what you do and why you do it. All right, so go to the TED Talk um, from Simon Sinek, listen to him, it's a great video. All right, and then create your one page plan. It's called the Get Focus Worksheet, just for that reason. It just keeps you focused on what you need to do. This is not rocket science, all right? It's business, okay, is simple, but it's not easy. It takes tenacity, it takes the ability to get up in the morning and get yourself excited about what you're doing, and you have to give yourself some help with tools, okay? Whether it be a worksheet or whatever it be, a conversation with somebody, but you have to stay focused in order to be successful in business. So thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with everybody. I am happy, more than happy, right, to have another conversation with folks one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, we could facilitate that uh, if you'd like, uh, Claire, for me, or just let people know how that. If you have any trouble with this worksheet, okay, if you're having trouble you know, creating your vision, uh, I'm happy to spend a little bit of time with anybody to go through it. Um, we have one question, Nick, and it's actually it's it's a it's a really really good question, um, which is the to so the topics are straightforward and clear, and it's and they're great and they're in inspiring, right? But do you have anything to add about how to address the discipline to follow through on it? Because that is, I would say probably that's the classic business or entrepreneur's um, downfall, isn't it? Is we have we get so sidetracked and we don't have the discipline to. To, to stay on task or to follow through on the, the more cerebral things because we all get so busy dealing with our day to day. So any suggestions on that? Yeah, yeah, it's, look, entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart, right? Uh, it, is, it is something that uh, requires a mindset uh, that, um, you know, you, you're not gonna give up. You have to have that intestinal fortitude. So what I do, what I recommend a lot of people do is I spend a lot of time, I spend five hours a week doing continuing education. And that continuing education is not necessarily learning the, the greatest things in business as much as it is personal development. So you have to read a book, you have to get an audio file, you have to watch videos, all right? I have, look, I keep them right here. This is impromptu, right? I've read this, I don't know how many times, right? I'm doing it again, all right? Mojo, another great book written by Marshall Goldsmith, all right? How to find your mojo, okay? Uh, how to find it if you lost it, all right? You have to you have to spend time, okay, uh, and that's the investment you need to make in yourself, right, to be a successful entrepreneur. It's not going to happen easily. Um, you know what? There's, you know, it, it's hard. I mean, entrepreneurship is hard work. And if anybody tells you otherwise, you know, they're pulling the leg. Uh, the, the bottom line is help yourself. You know, I mean, different books. The Go Giver, the Power of Discipline. I mean, I go through these time and time again, and I've been an entrepreneur for 40 years, right? I still need to do that, all right? I still need to wake up in the morning to get myself focused. And the other thing I would add to that as well is sometimes um, um, accountability is a good way to do it. A business mentor is always, whether, you know, working with a company like Nick at Focal Point or, or a score mentor, however you want to do it, um, I would say that the minute that you're accountable to somebody other than yourself, and you know that you're going to get on a call, whether it be once a month, every other week, however, however frequently it is. And they're going to say, so how did you do with this thing and that thing? And the other thing um, is a really, really good way to help you stay on task and to help you do some of the things that um, you may put to one side anyway, because human nature is we don't want to say to anybody, hey, I didn't get to it. Even though that person is not responsible for you and they're not your boss, that just having that mentor there to help you. Um, um, 
feel like you're accountable to someone. Uh, really, Absolutely. I, I can't stress enough how helpful that is to anybody. I mean, that that's whether in business or in life, and you know, it's like having a gym buddy or anything. It's just you know those things. I agree. Really Wholeheartedly agree, Claire. Thank you so much for adding that because that is so important. Uh, I myself have a mentor, uh, and that again, I'm going to be 62 years old in a couple of weeks, right? I have somebody who's younger than me holding me accountable. Okay, I have my own goals. Okay, that I want to accomplish, and yeah, I check in once a month, uh, and we talk about where am I at, where I want to go, where am I on the railroad track, you know. Uh, so th thank you for that. That's it's so important. It, it could be your wife, it could be your husband, it could be a friend, it could be a qualified mentor, whoever it is, but have somebody okay who you're accountable to. Perfect. Um, and then we have another couple of quick questions. Uh, one, how often should we monitor our competition online? I feel if I set Google alerts on them and overly concern myself that I, that I will lose originality, but overly lax saying, I'll just do my own thing as best I can may result in falling behind and trying not to plan ahead. It's often a game of one-upping. Hmm. So uh, good question. The, the idea behind knowing your competition is, is, it's a big one, all right? Because what your competition is pricing your product and service at, okay, a similar product, is gonna dictate your pricing and your margins and so forth. So you can't put your head in the sand and not be aware of what's happening around you from that perspective. Uh, but you're right, you can get consumed with it, all right? So I typically like to revisit that annually. Uh, where is the competition out there? What's happened? Uh, but you know, the Google alerts and so forth do help but you have to, if you have your own business plan in place, all right, you will not get knocked off the tracks that easily. Uh, that's what happens with a lot of small business owners is that they get so caught up in all of the distractions and because they don't have that one page plan to go back to, it's very easy to get off track, right? The next shiny object pops up, they're trying this, they're worried about that. Right? Come up with your vision, come up with your plan, all right? Strategy over tactics, all right? Keep that in mind. You have to have a strategy uh, before you start doing things. but. Uh, once a year okay we do even even at focal points here we do we do a, a competitive analysis um you know annually as to what other coaching companies are out there where are we at versus them what are they offering um etc so i would say annually um another just a quick question your email address is spelled slightly differently to your screen name is that is the, the is the email address on the uh on the screen correct on my screen name is different yeah, you missing an eye. <laughs> okay, um, I didn't set that up. This is my email address, and that's the way you spell Marinello. Okay. okay, Grandpa got off the boat hundred years ago, and he put that other eye in there for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, it's it's Bades for all the Italians that are out there. It's anybody from what has I E in their name is usually from the town of Barry in Italy. Well, that's interesting. Uh -huh. um, and then final question is. Um, how does the life cycle apply to services businesses compared to, uh, compared to consulting, for example? Uh, is uh, the life cycle of a business different if it's a service business or a product, a business selling product? Yeah, uh, and again, the, the curve can apply to any aspect of your business. Uh, it could be, you know, is your service basically uh, become a commodity? Okay, was it something where you, know, you had pricing power? And now because of technology and so forth. The interesting thing about the sigmoid curve, um, it used to be three to five years, the length of a sigmoid curve, right? And depending on the industry, it expands or it contracts as far as from the time you start the business to the time you can go into a decline. Because of technology now, everything has gotten concentrated. Um, so does it differ? Uh, no, not really. I mean, the whole idea there is to take a look at the different aspects of your business and determine, and this is where you get back to the competition com uh, conversation, where are you at? Okay, do you need to make some changes to that service? Do you need to make some, you know, the pricing, uh, is that is that different now? Do you need to package your, 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 your services as opposed to doing a la carte menu? Uh, you know, what's going on out there? So, no, it doesn't change. It's just, it's really more of a concept to take a look at where you're at and where you want to go and, um, you know, what do you need to change? You know, what, what do you need to learn before you can grow? Okay, great. Okay. I think um, that is all that we have. I think we're at exactly 11.30 anyway, so that's perfect timing. Uh, Nick, thank you ever so much. That was great. Really, really informative. And I hope that everybody um, who attended um, 
found the same. If you have any questions, Nick's contact information is up here on the screen, and um, we will make this uh, webinar available on YouTube within a few days. Um, as always, feel free to reach out to any one of us here at SCORE Monmouth. Um, take a look at all our upcoming webinars as well at monmouth.score.org. Yeah, monmouth.score.org. Sorry for that notification that just popped up. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's it. So again, Nick, thank you very much. Um, hope to see any of you or many of you on the next uh, upcoming webinar we have. And we will uh, speak soon. Thanks a lot. All right, awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate your time. Bye-bye. Go make some money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Take care now. All right. Bye-bye.